Hey everyone, welcome back to The Coop with Meyer Hatchery, where we talk all things poultry in hopes of educating chicken keepers and inspiring future flock owners. I'm Jess, and today we are going to be talking everything small. <laughs> we are going to be sharing about what it's like to keep a smaller, more urban backyard flock. And we have a special guest on the coop today from our amazing customer service team. We have Blair. Hi, Blair. I am so excited to have you here today. This is your first podcast with us. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So kind of before we get started about talking about a small urban flock, do you want to talk a little bit about where you are and just how you got into chicken keeping? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I've been chicken keeping for about a decade now, maybe a little more than that. Um, and I used to live in Michigan. We had a small hobby farm and we kept a, a ton of chickens. And um, I tried tons of different breeds. Uh, we also kept pigs and, and lots of other um, like goats and other farm animals. And um, so I learned about chickens first then, that was about 2015 or so. And uh, we moved here um, to Florida in 2017. And um, I had to downsize quite a bit <laughs> because when we moved to the city and um, we live just outside city limits in the county, and there are different regulations. Um, but yeah, I keep a smaller flock now, a more um, compact setup, but I love it. That's awesome. So you went from cold Michigan to nice, warm <laughs> Florida. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, a lot different. Do you miss the snow? Not really. No, I <laughs> we love it here. Love the beach so and awesome. all that. That's so great. Well, next time it snows here in Northeast Ohio, I'll pack some up and send it to you just in case you're ever missing it. <laughs> Maybe sometimes, especially in the summer. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Oh my goodness. All right. So let's talk a little bit about managing a small flock or having a smaller flock. So how did you plan your setup before you even got your chickens? How did you plan your, your backyard setup? Um, so when you're looking at having a smaller flock, like me personally, I have a larger family, so I wanted a lot of eggs. That's why we had a lot of chickens before. Um, so I just had to think a lot about what breeds I wanted to get. And it was pretty much a no brainer production breeds, um, cause they're going to pop out an egg a day basically. Um, so I knew what I wanted. Uh, and at Meyer, we have so many choices. So I honestly, chicken math got the best of me at first. Um, I ordered like a bunch of different breeds and, um, you know, I settled on the production breeds for the most part uh, because they produce so many eggs and I don't have to keep a ton of chickens. Um, as far as our coop and everything there, we, we built our coop out of um, like found materials like pallets. Um, we went to the like architectural salvage and stuff like that to to source it. But we just have a simple box set up for our coop. It's just like an eight or a, I think it's six by 10 or eight by 10 um, made out of pallets with like a sloping roof and a run attached to it because in an urban area, you need to have them fenced in and it's better to have them kind of double fenced in with a run and a fence around the property. Um, so that's what we did. Very nice. Being that you're in Florida, did you have to make any accommodations for hurricanes or anything like that when you were building? Oh, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say when we were building necessarily. Um, well, actually one. Yeah, we did have to do the we had to raise the coop because we do flood often. Um, we'll get six inches or so of water um, in their yard and, um, you know, we don't need it flooding. So uh, you can buy these concrete like cinder blocks or th they sell a lot of different things. And we bought some to lift our coop up off the ground about 10 inches. Good. Good. That's great. So what are some hair, I guess, did, have you experienced any challenges when you were setting up your, your backyard flock? Um, predators. I would argue that predators are worse um, in urban areas for some people. It's, there's a lot of, uh, basically everything wants to kill a chicken and we have a lot of hawks. We have a lot of raccoons. Um, and so the coop needs to be fortified 
more so than I noticed when we lived in the country. Um, so that was, that was a trial and error. I've, I've lost an entire flock to predators. So we had to reevaluate our setup, go around with, um, hardware cloth or, uh, you know, just metal, different, different types of fasteners, locks on everything. Um, so that's, that's actually been our biggest challenge. I've, I've lost a few birds to predators and we, we had to redesign once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That kind of goes with the whole kind of chicken keeping adventure. You're constantly learning yeah. and, and making adjustments and you know, all that yeah. kind of good stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about having an urban flock and being, you know, and a little bit of a more city kind of area. Um, let's talk a little bit about re regulations where you live. Mm. Where I live, um, there's a lot of different zones. Um, you do need to, if, if, you're watching this and you're and you're thinking about keeping chickens there's there's a few major things you need to look into you need to call your city and your county um, to find out what the regulations are uh, they absolutely do not allow roosters in most residential areas um, so that's a big deal um, and if you live in an HOA like if your neighborhood has an HOA um, I would say 90% of the time, it's not going to be a possibility for you. You can talk to your HOA, you can talk to your neighbors, but, um, you know, it, it would be pretty unfortunate to order chickens and then you find out you can't have them. So do your research. It's super important. Um, and there's reasons why they have these regulations. And again, it's because of excessive um, pests and sometimes predators, like I was talking about, um, in it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's something you need to look into. Absolutely. It is so important to do your research and calling your local city or your township. They're more than willing to listen to your questions and, and answer those questions for you. Um, mm -hmm. I know in the area where I am, you can have six smaller chickens. So you want to have like smaller breeds um, and mm -hmm. you can have, you can't have roosters. Um, and you can you can have a good size coop. Um, also, when you're asking questions, if you are allowed to have chickens, finding the location of your coop is really important. So does it need to be, you know, 10 feet from a property line or X amount yeah. of feet from a, a dwelling? And it's it's like you said, it's it's for pest control. It's for um, predators. It's, it's things like that. So sometimes it may not be the best news when you find out what you can and cannot have, but they do have their reasons for it. Although on the flip side, I'm seeing a lot, I don't know about around you, but I'm also seeing that a lot of roles are being um, expanded and, and they're allowing more backyard chickens. It seems like in the last couple of years, um, there's not as many roles as there used to be um, when it comes to, when it comes to a backyard flock. Yeah. Um... I would agree with that. And I've seen a lot more schools um, taking on agriculture programs, um, which is really nice for kids who can't keep chickens in their neighborhood. Right. You know, their families can't, and um, but they can still learn about them and such. And as a customer service agent, I hear about it occasionally and it's really special. Oh, that is really great. And you can help, you can help your neighbors out too. Maybe your neighbor around the corner can't have them, but you can have them and you, you kind of grow a community a little bit. Um, yeah, that's you know, kind of how it is right where I live. Some of the neighborhoods neighboring, they, they cannot have them. And, um, but all my neighbors, uh, I would say the majority of them keep them. Yeah. So you've already mentioned about your experience of moving from Michigan to Florida and having to redo your entire flock. Do you have any advice for anybody that is making a big change when it comes to their chicken keeping adventure? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really fun to have a big farm and to have more uh, chickens, but it's also fun to have a small flock and um, it's it's fun to treat them a little more like pets, kind of get to know them a little bit. Um, and I really enjoyed it, actually. I enjoyed um, downsizing my flock and uh, it just changing it up a bit, um, learning more about urban farming. Um, because in the country, we didn't have quite as many things to worry about. Um, but now I get to get into composting and stuff and just love it. That's um, my best advice to like our customers ordering chickens would be, uh, look into your regulations and, uh, maybe order, um, maybe 
one more chick than, you know, you think you need because, um, things happen. Um, and if it, believe it or not, four five, six chickens, 10 chickens is more than enough to produce quite a bit of eggs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Um, I've kind of went through the, the thing of when I first got chickens, we had over 20 chickens and it was a lot. And then we've kind of adjusted and over the years and I still have a little bit of chicken math going on, but definitely not as much as I, I did. And I totally agree. When you have that smaller flock, you grow to really know your chickens even more. Um, and they do become, I mean, there are, we provide our eggs and some of them we raise for meat, but they do become more like pets because you don't have as many. <laughs> um, right. At the time when we had so many, you were just like, here, eat, give me the eggs. <laughs> and that was like, right. you know, that part right. of it. So, yeah. So no, I totally agree. That's great. So integrating chickens into urban living. So how do you make the most out of having a limited space? Well, like I said, we have, um, I think a larger coop and run that we need for the chickens that we have, but um, I like to use automatic waters and feeders. When you have less chickens, you don't have to have these huge feeders. You can just have um, smaller, uh, but yeah, they're, they're pretty happy in their little, in their little setup. Um, we have a lot of coop building plans on uh, MeyerHatchery.com and you can really, um, you can really do so many things. I mean, anybody who's looked into keeping chickens is going to see there's a variety of different ways to keep chickens. Um, and some cities actually regulate that you have to have a movable coop. And so we have a tractor as well as a coop. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking a lot about our city regulations and being closer to neighbors. And with that, comes sometimes chickens can make noise and so how do you manage the noise level and keep your neighbors nice and happy <laughs> yeah my neighbors occasionally a chicken will be like laying an egg and they can be really loud when almost as loud as roosters when they're laying eggs and i'll get a text says your chicken okay <laughs> she's fine um and uh occasionally like over the last few years last seven years or so that we've been here six seven years um i've had a few roosters like it happens and um had to find them new homes and you know that that's that's a big deal your neighbors will get not too happy about that so um you need to choose uh, breeds that are more than likely you're not going to result in roosters. Um, I have suggested to a few of our customers to look into auto sexing breeds um, and sex linked breeds. That means at hatch, um, we can easily tell whether they're male or female and that way you're not going to end up with a loud rooster. Um, uh, but yeah, having a good relationship with your neighbors. A lot of my neighbors um, have been really curious and, uh, they're open to it. There are some that are not. So, um, you know, try and make friends, let them know, yeah. maybe pass out some eggs. Yeah. Yes. Give them a dozen eggs that will turn anybody, <laughs> most everybody <laughs> into, yeah, into lovers of chicken keeping. I loved it. Um, when I gave a neighbor some eggs and the eggs were blue, blue and oh. brown, and they had yeah. never seen, never seen that. So they were pretty awesome. excited. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's important to have those good relationships with your neighbors, and and I know personally with us, it was just come on over, check them out. You know, this is what we got. This is and and showing them the eggs, and and then they're like, oh, okay, we get it. You know, um, so that's that is really cool. So, yeah. what are the benefits of having a smaller flock? Um, surprisingly, a lot. I mean, it's very it's more budget friendly. Um, you're keeping less chickens, you're buying less feed. Um, the health benefits are good. Uh, you know, and I personally don't want to support, um, like big farms that maybe don't treat chickens that great. I really like the peace of mind of having mine at home and having my own fresh eggs. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It also helps to keep chicken math in check when you know that you can only have so many 
um, because <laughs> I that you can have less chicken math, which I think is good. And you do become very mindful of the breeds that you pick out. Um, you don't just go, oh, I want them all, which can be hard to tell yourself no. Um, but you do become very mindful of, like you mentioned when we first started talking about the production breeds. Do you want eggs? Then, then you need to look at breeds that are going to lay on a regular basis, especially if you have a larger farm. I know my chickens love kitchen waste. How about yours? Yeah, that's their favorite thing. It's kind of my favorite thing too, to throw it out there, put it out there in their bowl and they just go crazy and they'll be clucking all around and um, pushing each other around to get to it. It's just hilarious. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's less waste, which is better, you know, overall. All right. So do your chickens help with your composting at all? Uh, yeah, we do the deep litter method. Um, we and when the chickens are out in the yard, they get over there and scratch all around, get into it. Um, we also okay. like compost the eggshells. Um, so, yeah, definitely yeah. contributes. I love being able to tell people that my garden is like run on chicken poop. <laughs> <laughs> having that, having the compost from the chickens, it's always, I always get kind of look up and they see all the stuff that's growing in my garden. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's like all big, happy circle of awesomeness in this backyard. So that's great. And I love putting the chickens to work, turning the compost. Oh yeah. I mean, they gotta, they I gotta work it. for the mealworms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a tractor as well. And people say, wow, your grass is you know, is green as long as is thick. Yep. Yeah. As we move these chickens around. That's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. And and within the the benefits of having your own small flock and, and just raising your chickens in general, uh, it's the benefits of your own eggs. Um, that is so satisfactory to have your to have your own eggs and know that, you know, what you fed your chickens and and how you've raised them and you get to bring the eggs in and enjoy them or share them with your friends and family. Um, I know that's, that's one of my favorite parts of raising chickens is our amazing egg basket that we're getting from them and nutritional. Oh, yeah. They got right. a lot of nutrition in them. Yeah. So they do. That's it's like awesome. my favorite part of the day going to collect the eggs. <laughs> yes. Yes. It is the best. And getting that first egg. Tell me you remember when you got your first egg from your yes. chicken. It's like, and I'm pretty sure the neighbors heard me. It wasn't the hens <laughs> that we have to worry about. Yeah, it was no. my excitement. <laughs> yeah, I think the first egg I ever got was from an Easter egg. That's still like one of my favorite breeds. And I was just like Aww. amazed because like at first yeah. they lay a darker, a little bit a darker, like it kind of the color will lessen over time. But I was like, right. wow, it's green. You know, like, are you kidding? This is crazy. Aww. That's great. Let's see. My first egg came from a white leghorn and she was a Meyer meal maker. So yeah. I was really excited when I got her and I, she was the first one to lay out of all the chickens we got on our first first uh, round of chickens. So that's awesome. So nice. with your um, your backyard flock, do you you mentioned you compost. Do you have a garden? I have a small like raised bed garden. Okay. Um, and we are, we used to be more into gardening and now, uh, not so much the last few years have been pretty brutally hot and we've had trouble with pests as well. Um, but I love having chickens till up the garden to, you know, get it ready for planting. Um, and again with the compost. So my garden's looking good when I'm after it right now, we don't have a garden, but yeah. 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 That's great though. Yeah. Chickens are definitely good for, for the garden tilling, like you said, um, I know when we have um, extra produce, we just feed it over to the chickens and they love that that fresh treat. So uh, again, yeah. it goes to that whole really awesome kind of relationship with everybody in the backyard. The one thing I think is so important for so important for people to remember is you don't have to have acres on acres to have your own little homestead or your own little ho hobby farm. Um, you just, you don't need a ton of space. You, uh, six chickens or four to six chickens or, um, and then uh, some raised beds is excellent. It's easy to take care of and, um, don't, don't feel, ever feel like you have to have 
hundreds of chickens to be doing well <laughs> in the chicken world. Every coop's different. I totally yeah. agree. Um, yeah, I totally agree. A, a couple chickens, especially production breeds, they'll be producing. You'll be going, how do I use all these eggs? Like egg salad, egg sandwiches. Yeah, yeah you're going to you're gonna be really happy with a smaller flock. It's way more manageable too for most people. Um, like yeah. you said before, like the having a really big flock, it can turn into a chore. And um, yeah. although it's, it's nice to have a larger farm too, a small urban farm is is just a lot more manageable for the majority of people. Right, exactly. So you've mentioned some of the production breeds. What, let's talk specifically, what are some of your favorite breeds that we have here at Meyer Hatchery? Um, my favorite hands down for production is gonna be the Golden Buff um, and the Leghorns if you want white eggs. A lot of people want the brown eggs, um, but the Leghorns are amazing too. Um, However, for backyard production, the golden buffs, the black sex links, they're quieter and they're not so bad about escaping um, because you do not want, they can, the um, more flighty breeds can really fly and you do not want them going over your fence. Um, so I really like the golden buffs, the black sex links. Um, and I recently ordered some Austro whites. So I'm going to give those a try. So. Okay update but yeah. yeah and orpingtons are amazing um they're a heavier breed very quiet yeah i totally agree all of those are really great breeds uh orpingtons are my hands down number one favorite breed um when it comes to a backyard flock um they're just they're docile they're fun to raise um uh barb rocks i've had really good luck with those too um as far as production and, and being a really good um, backyard breed. Um, depending on your setup, you may want to even look at bantams. Um, some of our, like our, some of our bantams, you know, they can definitely be, they can produce eggs, even though they're really small. <laughs> um, they can produce eggs and they may work better in your particular um, smaller backyard flock. So uh, definitely check those out as well. I know I have a, I had to say it. I've got a thing for bantams. Okay, I like a lot of bantams. <laughs> they have they one. Really they have a good size egg. Yeah, yeah, they do surprisingly. And some of them are quiet, and some of them can be a little bit. You know, they, I feel like the smaller they get, the the louder they have to sing their egg song to let you know that they've laid an egg. <laughs> but they are a lot of fun. Awesome. Well. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. I had a lot of fun learning about your coop and your smaller urban backyard setup. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. And to everybody, we would love to hear from you. Do you have any ideas you'd like for us to talk about on the coop? Any questions we can answer? Email us your ideas and questions to podcast at MeyerHatchery.com. Be sure to subscribe, and if you would be so kind, drop us a review. Did you know that you can save $5 off your next Meyer Hatchery purchase over $50? Enter the coupon code, the coop, and check out. And with that, we thank you for listening to the coop. And remember, life is better because we have chickens. <laughs>